Okay, so the bearings finally turned up. So uh, I've just cleaned the pinion bearing shaft very lightly with a little bit of um, wet and dry, not taking any material off, just taking any film off there that may be on there. So a bit of jungle juice on there. And a little bit of jungle juice on the inner race of the bearing just to help it along. So this is um, just a water water pipe, I think it's inch and a half or something, barrel nipple. It just happens to fit over without touching the cage. Got a scaffolding tube just to make, I'm just making up the distance. And then just some bits and pieces that I've got, metal. I did have another lump somewhere. Bit of rusty stuff that'll do the job. And I'm hoping it's just gonna push down quite nicely. So close the valve. All lined up, looking good. Sounds tight, it's going. made it. So there's the inner fitted. So now I've just got the uh, the cages to fit. So I'm just gonna switch you off while I just get rid of this lot make a bit of space on the bench and see if I can pull the uh, outer races in of the pinion bearing into the case. So see you in a sec. Okay, so I've warmed the case, I've cleaned the area up very lightly and not removed any material from where the outer race is going to sit for the inner or bottom pinion bearing. I'm just putting a light touch of oil on the surface. Same with the outer race. Just a bit of jungle juice to uh, encourage it. And don't forget the shim. <laughs> so shim's going in. And what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to start this very lightly with the copper mallet and I'm going to try and pull it in. It's hard to see, but maybe. So I've got some washers, various assorted bits and pieces, and uh, I've cut a little bit of um, plate for the top. I'm just going to tap that on that side a little bit.
a bit better. Soon find out. I think it still needs a bit more on that side. Okay, let's give it a go. So wash it on. Wash it on the bottom. Plate on the top. It's a bit of I don't know what this is off. It's off some kind of pull that's been in the box, got some other toolbox for a few years. <laughs> oh yeah, and uh, I have this bit of tubing to so I'm not working down in, inside the hollow if you know what I mean. Tell it'll either go or it won't go. <laughs> and that is tight. Maybe a tad on that side. going bit to go yet not much though Be happy that that's down.
Looking good. She's in there. Yep. Happy. Shim's trapped tight, I can't turn it. So she's got to be home. So now, the, uh, the outer race. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to switch you off while I just do the same. Just clean that area up. The casings are clean, by the way. Um, and just get it prepped and just see what washers and spaces or whatever's going to fit this. So I'm just going to switch you off and we'll be back directly. Okay, I think we're right. So I just uh, found a socket which just so happens to be just a nice size OD to push on there and fit inside. So I've cleaned up a little bit inside, not taking any material off, just giving it a little bit of a rub, a little bit of jungle juice on there just to help it slide. Bit of jungle juice on the outer race. And this should actually, hopefully, line up a little bit easier because the bearing goes in a long way where the seal carrier fits. So it kind of like lines it all up for you. So that's going to sit on my outer race. Bit of tubing, washer, etc. And then the same washer I had for the underside. It's going to hold it and centralise it off the bearing that we've just put in at the bottom. It looks good from there. Obviously you can't see what's going on now because it's buried down inside. But it looks square enough. So let's give it a try. Let's get it going first. Case is still warm from when we fitted the bottom bearing or the big bearing next to the uh, pinion gear. And it's going, feels quite nice. far off locking up. Happy with that. Yep. Feels solid. And obviously if they weren't seated, when you 
you turn <laughs> when you turn that pinion on your pinion nut up 200 it is I said 250 didn't I? 200 newton meters whatever's not been pulled down will certainly get pulled down square and flat and bottomed out when that nut gets pulled in so I'm now just going to switch you off looking tidy and um, while I set up I'll think about how I'm going to get the inner race of the top end of the pinion bearing on maybe you have to wedge something up in here because obviously now I can only tap something down there when I get reasonably close and maybe could use the um, could use the threads and the nut and spacers to actually pull it along and once I get going you know the, the nut will pull it the rest of the way so be back soon okay I've got a bit of a plan hopefully it'll work I could slide that down where the diff carrier bearings go and I've got some bits of metal I've just worked out height wise that's about enough so that should stop it going that way allowing me to tap the um, tap the inner race down and it'll give me enough to get the nut on obviously once the nut's on I get it started we're away so I'm going to go for it so I'm just going to put a bit of jungle juice on the bearings now a bit on the collapsible collar off of that end put a bit of jungle juice on there as well I think not do any harm is it in Zealous. Let's try taking one piece out. <coughs> Not that one. Maybe. I'll just put a bolt in there to stop it wandering. It's all going to fall apart. Maybe. It's still there. Okay, a little bit of oil on the shaft. 
a little bit of oil on the inner of the inner race. A bit on the bearing because we can. Collapsible spacers in. That's a brass drift which I had earlier on and I've now lost. Gotcha. See what happens. Something's happening. So I've bottomed out there. To just pack it a little bit tighter. Or oh, can I put something in there that's not going to damage the case? An extra mill. white but it will go I'm going to go back to put my other piece of metal in see how that goes We've had a shift of material, that's why. Let's try that the other way around. Put that in first. Then that. Then that. Put this back. Maybe. Oh yes. That's it. There's enough there to get the nut on. Yep. Take the scrap 
metal out. And now it's a case of winding it in. So I'm going to switch you off now while I set up with the other, with a special tool and work out how I'm going to get my uh, 200 Newton meters. So see you in a bit. Okay, you can get 200 meters. You need some pretty long bars though. <coughs> so here's my. Uh, goes up to 160 foot pounds. Would be at an O2 over 200 newton meters anyway. So. So yeah, it can be done, no problem. Okay, unfortunately we had a bit of a disaster. Um, all going well until I come to want to push the bearings onto the, the diff carrier bearings onto the crown wheel carrier and uh, it wouldn't fit inside my press so I've had to uh, see what bits and pieces I had knocking around so I've cobbled together this it's 50 mil by 3 mil box and this is 20 mil 20 mil stud iron so I think these are probably about seven seven or eight tons tensile so they should be okay but up and they'll put a bit of a strong back so I'm hoping it's gonna push so <laughs> let's see what happens so here's our bits and pieces we made before so I've cleaned that face up with a bit of wet and dry not removed any material just clean the face so a bit of jungle juice on there just to assist us and the same on the inner of the new bearing Timkin bearings made in the USA nice so a bit of jungle juice in here And so that lump that we had before that allowed, I don't know whether just to tap that to start it. Let's see how we go. So fingers crossed the strong back's going to be tough enough to take it because they were fairly tight coming off. See how we go. Got movement. Looking good. I mean this is a, a 10 ton Ramos. Yeah. You can hear it. Yeah. She's on the way.
She looks square. To go on that far, obviously, as well. But what I don't want to do is, uh, is hit anything. I'm going to lift it off and uh, pull it back with a bearing puller and just give it another rub. I may just warm this up as well, just a bit of gentle heat on it. See how we go. So we'll be back directly. Okay, that uh, damage, not damage, but that problem was caused by me. There's a lip on the inside of this little bit of junk metal I was using that was bottoming out on the inside of the hub so this now just sits on the outer and I'm, I have every confidence now it's just going to go straight on he said yep yeah. And we've bottomed. Yes, we're there. So there should be no problem for the other end. So if I put that thing in this end so I'm not pushing on the outer race or the cage, sorry of the bearing then we should be fine next bearing so that one I know that probably doesn't matter these days but they always used to say that the inners and the outers were matched so uh, May as well go with it because we can. Gain a bit of jungle juice on there. Yep. Yeah. Bit of jungle juice on the inside of the new bearing. Nice. And I'll just get it started with this one because this is going to make sure everything is dead square looking good moving and I'll stop at that point swap the dollies over he said Got a rusty bar on my nice new bearings, how dare I? Okay. And we are most Definitely home. So the only thing left now 
is the um, outers one in the case so that one that outer race is the outside one and the one's the inner seals and it's close and this by the way even though I was a little bit skeptical when I stripped this out because the bearings didn't seem that bad but that just spins beautifully and it was just very tight before but not lumpy or anything just just tight you couldn't turn it by hand so I'm hoping we've got rid of the noise <laughs> obviously won't know till I'm driving it down the road but, uh, yeah. so I'm going to switch you off while I set up for pulling the outer races into the end plate on the case so we'll be back directly okay the um, the one in the casing is in and this is how I did it exactly how this one's gonna go so I had a couple of sockets smaller one there's the nut for the drawbar so I've actually just, same as I did with the other one, I've just tapped, I've obviously cleaned the inner face up, shims in there, and I've just tapped the bearing in lightly just to get it started. So that's going to rest on there. And I've just got this thick plate which is going to sit on top, which will just pull it down far enough to get it flush with the surface then once I know that it's engaged and it's not going to tip over what I did I just used another socket which was slightly smaller than the outer race and then just give it the the final squeeze okay so we're in I need one to hold the square and another to wind the nut and it feels like it's gonna go feels nice yep So this will bottom out, but the bearing still needs to go a tad further. So that's bottomed out at that now. So plate off and it's probably still got about 3 mil to go down. So this is just a tad smaller than the bearing and that should just sneak it down. It's exactly what I did. Same method to put the one in the casing. I didn't have the luxury of the uh, the vice to hold stuff, the nut. So you need three pairs of hands, but no problem, it's in. So I've got a full nut of thread nearly underneath. Yes. So this centralised. Looks good. hold in yeah it's going oh. 
and it's there, I can feel it tight, so I'm, I'm happy with that. It's in, and you can look down from the other side, and you can actually touch the shim. And obviously, if, the sh if you can spin the shim, it's not crimped in, pushed down far enough. Yeah, and the shim's tight, so we're in. So I'm just going to put a little bit of jungle juice on the inner races. It would be cruel not to. I'm going to lift the carrier differential housing uh, crown wheel in so I'm going to put I've taken the o-ring I've got a new o-ring I've taken the o-ring off I just want to pull it in obviously the shims are the original ones that uh, were underneath the original bearings a couple of bolts in Bends, teeny bit of backlash, which uh, I think could be about good. So, yeah, nice. Yeah, so I'm happy with that. So, O ring, seals, seal, O ring, Haldex job done. So tomorrow maybe, weather dependent, I'll be underneath the old girl, see if I can uh, get it back in and uh, oh, I'm still waiting, the oil's not turned up yet, my Haldex oil, so obviously hopefully that'll come tomorrow as well. So I'll let you know the outcome, we'll catch you later. Well, diff was fitted and um, all the oils topped up. Bit of a quirky one filling that Haldex system up. You uh, fill it and uh, turn the ignition on for five minutes so the pump runs. Then you turn it off, then you top it up again 
until it just starts to spill out then you draw off 70 millilitres <laughs> strange but anyway yeah all done we've had it this vehicle we've had two and a half years or something three years and it's never been this quiet I've just been down the dual carriageway different road surfaces different speeds and that diff now is lovely and quiet it's now a treat to drive not that it was bad before but um, it's always in the back of your mind especially when you're towing and all that uh, you know if a bearing collapsed or something you know it could do some damage and ruin the holiday so uh, quite pleased and job well done speak to you later folks